guys welcome back to Gilly Bikes another day another bike today I am on the Yamaha Tracer 9 have a look around the bike tell me what you think about it here is the 2021 Yamaha Tracer 9 it's got an 890 cc engine and comes with a 18 litre fuel tank Tell me what your thoughts are on the red. Personally, it's not what I would pick, but I think it looks quite nice on this bike. As you can see, this has got the touring pack on, so it has these mahoosive panniers on, which does make filtering through traffic that little bit trickier, but it's brilliant if you're thinking about taking it on a long tour. There is loads of storage in there. So we've got twin disc brakes at the front and they do stop the bike very, very well. And it does have the essentials, knuckle guards and my favorite heated grips. It has a wet weight of 213 kilograms. So that's including oil and fuel. So it's not a light bike, but it's not overly heavy either. It does have a seat height between 810 millimeters and 825, so that can be adjusted, which is good if you've got short legs like myself. It's got the weird lights on that Yamaha keep throwing on all of their bikes. I'm not sold on those yet. But anyway, it's priced competitively around 12,000 pounds for this touring version. Well, I hope you enjoyed the look around the bike. Now for the test ride. What I'm feeling so far with this bike is it's really comfortable. The seating position is really nice. If you watch my previous Yamaha video on the MT-09, there are a few similarities to this. The seating position is very similar, only this one's a little bit taller. It doesn't feel quite like the Thug bike like the MT-09 did. It, it seems a little bit more civilised. The quick shifter does work really well up and down the gears. And what I do like about this bike, it's, it is a little bit windy today and I'm so grateful to have this in front of me because the wind protection is really good as you would expect with a screen of that size heater grips are on full power <laughs> my hands are feeling toasty and you've got these knuckle guards as well so they're protected from the wind as well so my hands are very appreciative of it so the whole setup on here, the the buttons are pretty much identical to that on the previous video that I've done of the MT-09. They are minimal on this side, you literally just have the, the start and stop switch for the engine and you've got uh, a menu wheel and then on this side is where you've just got them cluttered everywhere so yeah you've got horns indicators your low beam high beam you've got your cruise control on this side you've got your hazard lights you've got a mode button you've got all all the gubbins is on this side so it is fully loaded, this bike. It has everything that you need as far as your creature comforts go. It's a heavy bike, this, but you don't feel the weight. Once the wheels are in motion, and it doesn't matter if they're going fast or slowly, this bike just feels really, really nice and easy to manoeuvre. So, that's a good thing. The quick shifter on this, again, is a delight. It's nice and smooth going up and down the gears. You barely notice your gear change. You get a lovely engine. The engine note changes when you change gear. Without that, you probably wouldn't even realize you've done it. It's that smooth, which is rare for quick shifters that I've used previously. Very rare. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give this a little bit of a blast down the motorway and 
just confirm which I suspect to be true which is that this bike is going to be fine for the motorway because of the wind protection that it's got already I'm expecting it to be a delight but you never know I have been surprised before by bikes not doing as expected either underperforming or overperforming so we'll see what this one does have a little bit of power for the overtake if you need to do one so 50 mile an hour this is just it's nothing for this bike it's just bimbling speed what I do like as well so obviously I've already mentioned it's windy but this can be moved on the fly and it's very easy to do it as well it's just a little bit of a press there as you can see and then that enables you to push it down and push it up my eye level is about here if you can see on the camera so my eyes are above the windscreen it's not something I'm looking through and I am a short fellow, so, you know, if you are average to tall, this windscreen won't bother you at all. I've been on the bike a while now, and I still don't see a point of having two. That's got all the information that you need with the gear indicator, the speedo, the rev meter, the fuel gauge, the time, what driver modes you're in with your traction control, your power modes and all that stuff. But yeah, the, doing the higher speed now, and it gets there very nicely, I do say so myself. But you're not having that issue with the wind at all, you're getting a bit of side wind, but you, there's no bike in the world's gonna stop that one on a windy day. So, as far as comfort goes on the motorway, fast roads, yeah, it's a it's a tick for me. This bike. got a bit of a growl to it as well let's see yes oh, let's get some sneaky sneaky little road to have a play on it is genuinely a good all-round bike it's good at high speed on the motorway it's good round town it feels nice and comfortable and for the price bracket it's it's actually well priced as well so as far as the overall package goes with this bike for me it's a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video don't forget to give me that thumbs up and hit that subscribe button please cheers guys